Capturing is super important. We want to make sure that anything that even seems very remotely relevant doesn't escape our attention. And in my opinion, Todoist has a really good way to do this because it has an inbox built into it by default. And it is also the default place where new tasks will land. So it is super easy to use. As you just saw me do, I press the plus button here. And from there, I can just enter anything I want. Any task, idea, or other item. I don't have to process it now. All I want to do now is capture it. So I don't have to worry about any of these detailed priorities, labels, or reminders yet, or anything like that. By default, it will land in the inbox. And once I add it as a task, that's where it will live. And that's where it will stay until I decide to process it. So that is really easy to do. And there really isn't much more to it. There are other ways to capture specific items more easily, though. Let's say, for example, that I want to capture a specific web page that I found. For that, it is very easy to use the built in integration for Chrome and various other browsers that Todoist have created. Here I have it sitting in the top right corner of my browser. And once I've landed on a website that I want to save, all I have to do is press the button. And here I'm going to press add website as task. Now you see me do that. And by default, it applies the markup for easy reading and easy retrieval if I need that later on. So it takes the title of the web page and it applies a clickable link to that web page as well. The thing I do most of the time when processing new items though is I just remove the due date with a few clicks by just selecting no date here, but I leave the inbox as the default place for it to land. So now I'm pressing add task and let's see what happens. I've pressed it and now when I go to my Todoist inbox, you can see that it's here. And when I click it, that is where I land right away. So that's beautifully done, easy to do, and easy to capture websites like articles you may want to read, for example. The same is true for email. So here I'm in my Gmail, and for that, Todoist has an integration as well, which I've installed. Now let's say I want to forward this email into my Todoist inbox for whatever reason. Maybe it's a newsletter that I want to read, or I just need to perform a specific action and the instructions for that action are in this email. Whatever the reason is, I can do that very easily too by selecting the Todoist add-on here. And if we just wait a second, it will allow us to even edit the title of the tasks, but by default, it will take the email headline as the title. And here again, we can select the project, which will be the inbox by default. So all we have to do now is press add task. It says your email has been added to Todoist. Well, that's great. And there it is. It's been added to our inbox and it's even been signified as such with this email icon here. So what happens when we click it, it will just show the email with its content directly from Todoist. So those are a few ways to capture items from various sources into your Todoist task manager. As you can see, very easy to do. Same is true for various other ways to share items. In fact, that's exactly the option that you'll be using if you, for example, want to uh, save a YouTube video that you're watching on your phone or your tablet. You can actually use the share functionality from that app and have Todoist selected as the destination. And by default, those will also land in your inbox and they will be easy to read, watch, click, whatever it is that you're saving in here. It's easy enough to capture these ideas or thoughts while you're on your computer using Todoist as we've just illustrated. But you may also have a lot of new input while you're on the go. So what do we carry around us all the time? That's right. It's our smartphone and Todoist has a fantastic app that has widgets, which allow you to just literally press one button to start entering a new idea or thoughts right into your system via your smartphone. So before moving on to the next lesson, 
think about how you want to ideally capture all your thoughts in Todoist. Obviously, the way I've shown you is the most likely way you can do it, but there's lots of integrations out there and you may have a system that works differently. So think about all the inboxes that you have, first of all, which I have a video on, by the way, if you want to get some inspiration. Find a way to put all those inputs into Todoist. And if you're ready, then click on the next video to learn how we're actually going to organize our system to make what we've captured land in the right place.